Hello, my name is Kate Stewart and I'm at the Linux Foundation working on dependable embedded systems and I'm here today with my fellow ELISA ambassador, Philip Almond, to talk to you a little bit about what's happening with ELISA um, and Philip will go into more, Philip is also the uh, lead for the automotive working group and he'll tell you a little bit more about what's going on there. So I'll give you a, at the start a little bit about the ELISA overview and some of our strategy, what we're, we're doing, and then we'll transition this to Philip. So the first thing to understand about ELISA is it's focusing on how we can get Linux and safety critical systems to be effective. And part of that is understanding um, whether a system is safe is to re actually really understand what the system is, all the details, all the software that's coming into play, all the interactions with hardware. Understanding how a system works is the first step. And Linux is just a component in that system. But that whole system context is key for understanding this problem. And then Linux itself is a very customizable um, operating system. And understanding exactly which components are playing a role is going to be key to any type of analysis you do. So the project is looking at how we can actually break this problem down into meaningful chunks and then figure out where there's gaps that we probably need to increase, improve either Linux or in some cases working with the um, open source um, communities around it and, pos and with some of the um, safety uh, communities to understand how the standards are looking at this type of software. So the LISA project um, has been started now for a couple of years, and it's all about enabling Linux in a safety critical applications. And that we, the name Elisa comes from that acronym, from those, is an acronym for that. Um, but we've taken on the challenge of trying to make it easier for companies to build and certify Linux based safety critical applications. Our mission statement is to define and maintain a common set of elements, processes, and tools. So we're not necessarily here about writing code, we're here about figuring out how we can use the code, and we may write some code um, in the process of this uh, to help, but our mission here is to really understand how we can do this effectively and at scale. Because there's the Linux curl changes tremendous at a tremendous rate, about nine changes an hour. Um, and so we need to figure out stopping at one point kernel and one thing kernel and only doing it for one point is not gonna work. We need to figure out how we can work in an adaptive fashion with as Linux changes, as bug fixes happen. So there's a lot of good challenges here to work on. And it's also important to understand what we're not trying to do. Um, this collaboration isn't going to engineer your system to be safe. We can't ensure that you know how to apply the processes we're figuring out in your own system. We're going to try and make it clear as part of our deliverables uh, to document this and to explain it, but we can't ensure that you are going to do it correctly. And we're not creating an out-of-tree kernel, as I say. The kernel change is too fast for this. So we have to keep to a space where we can continue to improve it. And at the end of the day, we can't relieve you from your responsibilities and legal obligations and liabilities, because in the safety critical space, uh, if people are making products, you know, it's up to you to do the right and awful analysis. But we are path forward, and we want, you know, we, we welcome peers to collaborate with to help us figure out what the good common consensus is that's applicable and practical in the industry. So if you're interested in learning more, we certainly invite you to join the community. Um, we are, we have various mailing lists. We have um, meetings that go on a regular. We have an open GitHub documentation. We have working groups that meet weekly that you can start to, you know, find peers who are interested in the same problems you are. And then we've just finished up a workshop last week and um, the videos for that should be showing up shortly and where we were basically working, doing working sessions as well as um, sharing knowledge. So to give it what we're doing is at least from a technical strategy, um, what we're doing is trying to find applications um, that are open source so that we can do a proper analysis on them. And we've been working in the automotive and the medical use cases and we're looking for other ones that we can continue to work on the analysis for. Um, and what we're trying to do is create these resources that the people who are doing the integration of these systems can then use and apply. 
So, you know, one of the examples is we've been doing some analysis of the common weakness enumerations um, that are, you know, known in the industry uh, to identify which ones could potentially have hazard applications associated with them. And making that aspect, um, which is separate from security, but not complete, you know, the safety and security are, uh, you can't have safety without security. <laughs> so there's a relationship here. And, um, you know, figuring out how we can understand what's there already and then build on it to make it easier. The way we're doing this is we've set, you know, structured ourselves into a set of working groups. Um, there's the automotive working group, which Philip will tell you a bit more about later. And then um, I also work on the medical working group um, where we're looking at a, a medical device and we're using that as a focus for our argumentation and trying to break the problem down into meaningful chunks. This information flows into um, another set of working groups, the safety architecture working group that's sort of looking at it from a architecture perspective and how we can successfully refine it. There's the open source engineering process working group, which is trying to look at, okay, we've got a lot of processes going in open source and you know the updates and so forth and how this all can flow together. And then they're also taking and looking at specifically Linux features as a group looking at the Linux features, the configs, how this can be, how a system can be um, customized and tuned when it's being built to be effective here and what the implications of some of this is. And we also have a group that's focusing on, you know, tools and looking at how to improve the code. So all of these groups are working together to come up with material that will be useful at the end as part of our Lisa deliverables. And so, like I say, we welcome you to get involved. Um, as you can see here, there are many, each of those lists, like groups I gave has a li mailing list. And, um, uh, you know, from the OSEP to the medical devices, to the architecture, if those are interesting to you as well. However, given this is the AGL Tech Day, I suspect most of you are going to be interested in the Automotive Working Group. And so I invite you to um, look at the materials we've got available, and Philip will give you more details now. Thanks a lot, Kate. Yeah, so it was a very nice introduction on the overall strategy. So my name is Philip, and I'm working for Bosch as a technical business development manager. But I'm talking to you today as the role as automotive workgroup lead and Elisa Ambassador. And um, yeah, Kate already illustrated the mission which Elisa has. Uh, we said from the automotive group, uh, we need to do a little bit of extra add on to fit our primary focused customers, so to say. And um, yeah, we in the automotive workgroup, we discussed the condition and prerequisite the automotive sector needs to integrate Linux and safety critical systems. And we were looking into actual use cases. One of them is the telltale use case to which we come. And um, as we didn't want to only do it for us, we strongly look how we interact. So our architecture work group, the open source engineering process, ESA, OSAP are interesting parties. So just as uh, Kate showed, where the automotive use case and the medical use case go into the other work groups. We try to make our material public as early as possible. So we have a work group repositories and we also use a Meta ELISA layer, uh, which is used for our collaboration or work, which we have with AGL. So um, for this, we'll look a little bit later into one of the next slides. Um, Shortly, just to mention, as we are in the AGL Tech Day, I want to give you an overview of our members, which we have before we jump into the use case. The prime premium members are BMW and Toyota, but there is a bunch of others and recent joining also from Asian OEMs. And I guess this is very nice to see that we also have AGL contributing. So um, thanks a lot. And also thanks for the opportunity to talk to you today. So therefore, let's go into the Telltale use case. And why have we decided for Telltale use case within the automotive work group? So first of all, it was very nice that this is a relaxed ASIL level, so to say. It's allocated with ASIL A or B, depending to whom you talk to. So we don't have to mess up with all the very complex things in there. And the second thing, uh, if you start talking about real time in Linux, then you add additional complexity and a lot of discussion 
but uh, Telltale basically comes with relaxed timing constraints of 100 milliseconds, which gives us a much more flexibility in the concept. Also, what was very nice that there has been pre-existing work. So thanks a lot, AGL, for having the cluster demo in. And uh, I assume that this is a very valuable demo because it just shows how cluster and infotainment migrate and converge to each other. And so I guess there's a good volume market, so it's going to be also for a high market use case. All right. So on the next slide, you can see that um, we're current, what we currently do. We are using an STPA analysis. I will shortly tell more about on the next slides because STPA is most likely not familiar to everybody. And based on what we analyze, we need to further rework our demo. So we started with a QMO-based demo, your ones from AGL in the past. We trimmed it a little bit down. We did something on kernel configuration to make it smaller, just to limit the scope for uh, safety-related issues. And uh, as we saw, it's very hard for people to jump in, in, into our group. We started to document all this. So we have a guide in there and uh, how to contribute, how to bring things into GitHub, because we saw it's not common for everybody to use GitHub as a tool. So these are our current activities. And next would be to talk a little bit shortly about the STPA. What is STPA? It's a system theoretic process analysis. And it's quite new hazard analysis technique. Uh, Simplified words, you can compare it to a HARA if you have come across this in automotive. Other than this, it basically looks into uh, a model of exit, uh, accident causation. And uh, the interesting part is that it also looks for unsafe interaction of system components. And even if those all components still work properly and may not have failed, so where there are certain issues can come up. If you want to read all of it, uh, take a look at the link which is shared here through the handbook. I guess the first 30 pages are very nice to read and the basics and the practical example at the end of the book can also be worth a read. Right, just some benefits and advantages of STPA. They can be used to analyze very complex systems. I guess also the Baidu Apollo has been used with a system theoretic process analysis. And it also helps because you don't need to understand all level of your program at the beginning. So you start with a higher level, go deeper, can look into certain models. And this I see also an advantage for further analysis. It also helps to make design decisions. And uh, some part, what I really like is a pretty last point here, the documentation which it provides because it really make you document the things you discuss in a visual way rather than a large uh, table or spreadsheet. And also that you can simply integrate it into your existing processes. So yeah. Then uh, how do we go further with the STPA analysis? I guess it's on the next slide. Um, yeah, we are currently in a level of a control, what we call control structure, where you can see all the interactions, how our system works. So we mainly base our concept on an external watchdog. We see if we reach this level of complexity to go also to an internal watchdog and see how we get the rendering path in. But for now, we see what is external to our system, which contributes with inputs. We have um, the blue boxes, which are very important parts. It's C web data is managed. You can see the QT part is in there, the return buffer handling. This is very important because we have so many different areas of uh, timing constraints. The display has 60 hertz, the rendering is between 125 hertz maybe, and we have the overall scheduling. And this is a little bit to make our life easier and understand where we are in which timing domain, right? So we bring this forward and then uh, for the continuous further activities, we want to now map this again to our AGL demo. We started based on the cluster demo. We did the SDPA analysis, and now we need to bring the reality back to our model if everything matches. And as the SDPA work is very useful and also done in the medical devices work group in ELISA, we try to take joint sessions and to just see that we get a common understanding and also have a unique or unified picture among ELISA work groups so that we're not talking about different things. Uh, what we still also have to do is to bring the demo to the latest stage. Uh, Yamaguchi san was heavily helping us with this, and Jan Simon and Walt. So uh, thanks for the support also. And we want to bring it on real hardware. So because automotive guys really like to touch something and press a button. So our QM was very good for distributing, sharing to ramp up people. But if we want to put this in the exhibition, we need to have a, something you can touch and feel. And also we see that we really miss 
uh, further participants who have really interest from OEMT1 and other automotive. So therefore, it's very nice that we can talk today at AGL Tech Day and get a stronger outreach also. We will continue our uh, sessions and other events and hope to find a bunch of contributing partners. So, and for this, if you're interested, kindly just uh, join us. We have the automotive working group resources listed here. We have currently a mailing list with 150 members round about. Uh, simply subscribe to it and become part of it. If you want, you can also just read what we're doing in our meeting minutes. We meet more or less weekly. Uh, not everything is in the minutes because if we are in heavy discussion, we prefer discussing with it. So joining is really fun. And uh, currently we take a meeting on Fridays. So here's also the link to the Zoom session for it. Yeah, as said before, there's a documentation repository uh, for the overall idea, also explicitly for the cluster demo. And if you from AGL are very interested, take a look at the Meta ELISA description. We have the guidance there, how to get our layer integrated into the AGL build. And uh, yeah, last but not least, we also have some concept tool work where you can do requirements traceability and map requirements across uh, different use cases. So it can be even helpful outside of safety. And I guess by this, we're at the end of what I wanted to present. So thank you very much for your attention. It was very nice to get the chance. Thank you again.